grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord our Savior, Jesus Christ. Our text for today is taken from the Gospel lesson from Matthew 3, verses 13 through 17. We pray. Open our eyes, Lord, that we might behold wonderful things from your word. Amen. Dear sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus, Today we celebrate Epiphany, as I've just mentioned, but also it is the baptism of our Lord. And as we remember our baptism, one thing that is, is a beautiful reminder to do is when we have the invocation at the beginning of the service, we can make the sign of the cross upon us as a reminder of our own baptism, because the sign of the cross was placed upon us at our baptism. So, why don't you do that with me right now? Just start at the top, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So that is something that you can do whenever we have the invocation at the beginning of the service to remind you that you are a baptized child of God. Or you can just do it every morning, uh, whenever you get up, uh, sometime in the morning, just to say that uh, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Do the sign of the cross to remind you whose you are, that you are a baptized child of God. Because this is so significant, that your identity is found in Jesus Christ, that you are a child of God. We see the importance of baptism in the fact that Jesus himself was baptized. Now we need to make a clarification here because John was having a different baptism than the baptism that Jesus began. See, John had a baptism for repentance. And Jesus' baptism is a baptism in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But when Jesus came to be baptized, it is fascinating because we see the Trinity present there, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit present at his baptism. So we see that Jesus is empowering baptism because as Jesus is baptized, though he's not a sinner, he is taking upon himself the sins of the world as he's baptized because he's not a sinner. And this was a baptism for repentance of sinners. But he is identifying identifying himself as the one who would be the sin bearer he would be the sin bearer of the whole world. So he is then baptized by John. Let's take a closer look then at Matthew 3, beginning at verse 13. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to John to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you. And do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus was baptized, immediately he went up from the water. And behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming to rest on him. So like I just mentioned, here we see the whole Holy Trinity present because Jesus is baptized, the Spirit comes down, and just a couple of verses there, we'll see that the Father says, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. So the Holy Trinity is present here at the baptism of Christ, and that is why we also are baptized in Christian baptism in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And what a beautiful thing, then. We are connected with Jesus in our baptism in so many ways. We're connected to him in his baptism, but also we're connected to him in his death. In other words, that now his death pays for our sin. And we're connected with him in his resurrection. As he rose from the dead, we will rise from the dead. So baptism is so important. What a blessing. And it is for all people. It doesn't matter your age. It's a gift for everyone. And that's why we do indeed baptize infants. Because it is God's action. It's not our action. It's God's action. God's God's action of love calling us his child. And that is so beautiful, so wonderful, that he calls us his child in our baptism. So Jesus is baptized. The Spirit comes down upon him. And the same thing happens to us when we are baptized. We also receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. We see this in Acts chapter 2, verse 38. For Peter is preaching to the multitudes on the day of Pentecost. And he says, repent and be baptized, every one of you, In the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. 
as we're baptized, we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, who brings us to faith, who keeps us in the faith, who produces the fruit of the Spirit in our lives. Thank God we have that Holy Spirit living inside of us. What a beautiful thing. You'll notice also, here in Acts 2, verse 38, Peter said that as we're baptized, we receive forgiveness. Be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. As we're baptized, we're forgiven our sins. Thank God for that. Forgiven all our sins. What a wonderful blessing. There's forgiveness through faith in Jesus Christ. So we thank God that we're baptized. So we want to remember that we're baptized. And that's why it's beautiful that we make the sign of the cross as we remember our baptism in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, because it is the cross that empowers that baptism, enables God to forgive us our sins because he paid for our sins on the cross. So many times we do not value our baptism. We are sinners. But Jesus died on that cross to pay for our sins. He rose again from the dead. And now through faith in Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. You have a home in heaven above. Thank God for all the gifts that God gives to us in our baptism. Now look at this last verse. And behold, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased. This is my beloved Son. Now, of course, the Father loves the Son. We understand that. But why this is so incredible is to think that God gave up his beloved Son to die for you. If his Son is beloved and he gave up his Son to die for you, what does that make you? That makes you beloved of God. You are beloved of God. To think that he would die for you, that is amazing. To think that Jesus Christ would die for you. To think that the Father would give up his precious, only, dear, beloved Son for you. To die on the cross for you. That is amazing. So you are also beloved of God. And this is so important. Because today, we have people struggling to know where their identity is found. You see, they think their identity is found is, you know what, maybe although I was born a male, maybe I'm really a female. Or maybe I was born a female, but you know what? Maybe I'm a male. And the problem is we're, we're putting this upon young children who really don't know what their life is going to be like in the future or what their emotions or their even their sexual feelings will be like later on in life. So pe young people are being pressured to consider that maybe they're an, another sex. And this is wrong. This is sinful. Because what did God say about all of this? Way back at the ver very beginning, God made us male and female. This is a gift that God has given to us, that we are either male or female at birth. This is a gift that God has given to us. So let us rejoice in this gift that God has given to us, and let us not think we have to change something that God has given to us. In Genesis 1, verse 27, it says, So God created man in his own image, in the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Notice it doesn't get, go on to list other types of genders or up, uh, other types of sexual preferences. No. And why is this so important? You think, well, all this is, is going on in California or somewhere else. Guess what? In one of the schools in our area that the students from one of our two churches go to, and, and Channing told this to me, and I, <laughs> it was hard to believe him, to be honest, because I only believe half of what Channing says. Because <laughs> usually he's joking at it half the time. But anyway, but uh, this has now been verified. There, one of the students at one of our local schools has identified as a cat. And this, this person has bit another student. So, well, that's what cats do. Bite, right? So what is the school doing about it? Nothing. Why? Because the state says, well, you can't do anything about it. Now, is that ridiculous or is that crazy? Well, to me it is. That is, that is, that is crazy. That is wrong. Um, where, is our identity, where is our identity found? It's found in that we are beloved children of God. We don't try to find our identity uh, as we're really young kids, you know, being pressured by people. Well, you've got to figure it out. Maybe you're really not male or maybe you're really not female or, or maybe you're a cat or a turtle or who knows what else. But the point is, oh, fish, that's what... 
<laughs> That's what some of these kids are identifying as a fish. Okay. Well, anyway, I like to I like to swim. Does that make me a fish? No, of course not. This is crazy. Now, why this is so important is because we need to teach these kids that their identification is found in Jesus Christ and who they are in Jesus Christ, that they are a beloved child of God. This is what we need to teach people. We especially need to teach this to the young people, that they would find their identity in Jesus Christ, that they are beloved child of God. And this is is so important because then that's the foundation for our lives and we go on to follow Christ to learn more about Christ and how he wants us to live not just living whatever way we feel like we should live or whatever way others tell us we should live but following Jesus Christ living the way that he has taught us to live now I want to make it clear at the same time that that we have compassion on these people that are confused okay so we're not we're not uh, prejudiced against them we, these people are confused. They need help. Okay, they need help. So we want to help them. We want to pray for them. We want to teach them right from wrong. But we do want to have compassion about these people. But we, we also want to help these people to understand where is fulfillment found? It is found in Jesus Christ. As Professor, as one of our pastors from our seminary in Fort Wayne says, Pastor Smith, Your greatest fulfillment in all of life is living under his mercy as a beloved child of God. In other words, people are trying to find fulfillment in sexual sin. They're trying to find fulfillment in maybe riches or maybe being famous, whether as a sports star or a singer or or actor, whatever. We're, We're trying to find fulfillment in all these different ways. Where is fulfillment found? Again, Pastor Smith, your greatest fulfillment in all of life is living under his mercy as the beloved child of God. This is where our fulfillment is found. We are beloved children of God. Beloved children of God. Yes, because the Father loved the Son. He said, this is my beloved Son. And yet, he gave up his Son for you. That is how much God loves you amazing love and the father goes on to say with whom i am well pleased the father is of course pleased with christ who is perfect and because we now have faith in jesus christ he's pleased with us because of the fact that we have faith in jesus christ and we therefore have a home in heaven through faith in jesus christ not based on our works but based on what christ has done for us on the cross So rejoice today in who you are. You are a beloved child of God. And that needs to warm your heart to think that God loves you so much that he not only gave you creation, he gave you redemption. And so on this cold January day, this love of God warms our hearts so that we can ignore the cold. Yes, put your coat on, but still, ignore the cold because you know what? You can be warmed by the love of God, knowing that God loves you so much. He loves you so much, he gave his son for you. He loves you so much, he's given you his Holy Spirit, he's given you forgiveness. You are truly blessed. Let us rejoice then today in who we are, beloved children of God. And let us also thank God for the forgiveness and eternal life we have in Christ Jesus. Remembering Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand for the blessing. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds, through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen.